All right, guys, it's an honor. We're here with Chris. How are you doing, Chris? Chris from RF Farmer, he's the founder. Uh, solved a problem for many ISPs, including my own. Uh, and I remember you having extensive conversations with my colleague, Chair Healy. So I just, uh, just wanted to introduce you to the guys and tell us what, what you have here and what's your favorite product and what's your newest product. Well, with the RF Farmer product, we, you know, we have sector kits for all the ubiquity antennas. Um, they're pretty well manufactured. Yeah. Uh, steel. Um, steel. Um, marine grade aluminum. Oh, are they? Oh, no. So, if you look at the quality of products, um, you know, that's really good. Yeah, no, it's really nice. Yeah. So, then we also have the kits for the dishes, and the newer kits now will support any of the rockets, including all the way up to the air fiber X's. Yeah. Cool, and what about in what, any of the Microtech ones as well? Does it or? Well, yeah, the, the Microtech, the, the little Microtech one will yeah. fit in there as well. Okay, yes. cool. Oh, okay, the net metal and all them, will that, or not even the, uh, you know, okay, that's, that's cool, that's fine. Yes. Yeah, that's perfect. Uh, let's, uh, let's talk about your uh, cool switches, the Netonic switches. Um, what sort of... Uh, Chipsets on them, and uh, and are they different across each one, or no? So they they use the Vitesse uh, VCS 742X series. So pretty much it's the exact same switch core, from the smallest switch to the largest switch. So it's the same firmware, okay. same processor, same memory, same buffers. Uh, so all the same software features. And are, are they all line rate switches? Uh, yeah, they're all line rate line rate non-blocking switches. That's cool. Um, but uh, they they are an enterprise slash introduction carrier grade switch core, so they have a lot more advanced features than some of the other less expensive switch cores on the market. Kind of so based. And are they purely layer two, or do they have some basic layer three features? No, they're they're purely layer two. Okay. Um, but uh, they're a very good layer two. Oh, you know, absolutely, that's, that's cool. And uh, so, like, the, I noticed that. So, are these are all PoE switches, or and what sort of PoE do they support? So, the, yeah, they're, they're passive PoE, but you can you can power active. PoE devices with them, you just have to manually turn the power on the port. Okay. Uh, the difference, some of the differences with our switches are than any other on the market is we're the only switch in the market that offers 48 pH, which is uh, 48 volt on all four pair up to 1.5 amp. Okay. So that can really push the power out. So like you can power the mini switches. So like one port on, on one of these switches can power this. 100 meters away and then power to five other devices yet again. Okay, so when you have a very hot, tall tower yeah, yeah. plant. So you, yeah, you can go up 100 meters, mount this in an enclosure, run one wire down, power it with a switch down below, or a, 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 a proper PoE brick that will supply enough power, and then go up and And since this has the same software features as that, you can theoretically set up VLANs and then make them all virtual ports in your router. And so what, what sort of, let's say, what sort of price point are, are those operating at? And let's say this big one here, uh, so, so this is the WS twenty four four hundred A. It has an SRP of uh, what is it? Uh, four ninety nine. Okay. Yeah, four ninety nine ninety five. Um, the, the twelve port AC is two ninety nine ninety five. But keep in mind that uh, it has uh, active cooling, two hundred fifty watt power supply, it has POE monitoring as far as current per port. Um, it has full SNMP. Um, it has uh, the ability to power air fibers up to four. That's pretty cool, right? And it has all of our smaller switches have through hole mounting, so you can theoretically screw it straight to the wall. Uh, they all have optional DIN rail mount kits or rack mount kits. Oh, very nice. So, you know, you can, you can so you've been kind of top of the market, like the hearing what people are requesting. Yeah, you, you, can, you can tell just by just by the weight. There's a lot in there. It's like what Boris said and was a snatch because heavy, very reliable. I thought it was very good. It's absolutely really, really good. Yeah. Cool. That, that's, that's awesome. And the build quality is, is pretty good. So. Yeah, and there's a lot of firsts. And then our DC switches, the, what we call the smart DC. Okay. And, and when we say smart, we're not referring to the switch capacity, but we're talking about the power. So okay. our smart DC, you can actually feed it from 9 to 60 volts in. It doesn't care. And steel power 48 and 24 volt devices. So you have actually a built-in voltage regulator. Yeah, this this is the we designed this power supply. It has its own Texas Instruments microprocessor, its own firmware. So it's constantly monitoring the input voltage from the battery banks. It tells you how much the efficiency is of the conversion, um, it, it, and then allows you to then power out. So you could hook, you, like see this one here is hooked to just a single 12 volt battery, but then it's outputting 48 volt. 
high to power the mini switch, which is powering these radios, and then it's powering the Airfiber 5X, all from a 12 volt battery. But you could feed it 12 volt, 24 volt, 36 volt, 60 volt, 9 volt, it doesn't care. And then you can program it to give you warnings when your voltage levels get to certain levels, and also to shed ports, to shed PoE load. Uh, to conserve your batteries, or like you can set time PRI. conditions to turn ports off at night. You don't need to use the power, so to give you a longer runtime. That uh, is pretty savage. And what sort of what sort of money is that? that you don't this is three seventy nine. Three seventy nine. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and uh, so it allows you. You don't have to do any type of voltage regulation. You took it directly to your battery banks. Okay. So it regulates the voltage, and it's a very well designed power supply. Under worst case conditions, this power supply only has four hundred millivolts of ripple from peak to peak. So typically, power supplies have 600 millivolts average. So, so it's actually really smooth. It's very smooth. Think of ripple for electronics as vibration. Yeah. So if you have that hammering of the, of the ripple, it actually will cause your components to wear out quicker and generate more heat. Since it's very All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're here at the Mimosa booth. We're going to be talking about That's pretty savage. a giveaway. So let me ask you, where do you get the time to do all this? Like, uh, like, uh, are, like, have you a uh, fixed packing, or uh, have you just really dedicated staff? Like, how, how are you working out these products? Small, small company, uh, just three of us. We just we work a lot of hours. That is awesome. Uh, well done. Uh, really us. exciting stuff, and uh, we wish you all the best uh, for the future. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Tom. Here we go. Nice so, the first